Amen. You know, it is because all because of God's amazing grace. And you know, because of that grace, just like the song says, He took our place. Do you know that? He took our place on the cross. He bore the world's sins for you and me. Because of His mercy and His grace, we have eternity with Him. If we choose to follow Him. Amen. That's something to be thankful for this morning, isn't it? You know, sometimes I think we overlook the blessings that we have. And you know, one of the blessings I think we overlook, it's a blessing to be called a child of the King, isn't it? Amen. Think about it. It's a blessing to be called a child of God. You know, if you will, go ahead and turn to James chapter 4 today. We're going to be back in our series. We took a little detour last week. But you know, sometimes detours are needed, aren't they? Have you ever gone somewhere before and you have more than one person in the car? And when you have more than one person in the car, sometimes you have more than one navigator in the car. You know what I'm talking about? There's some laughing going on. You know what I'm talking about. There's some looking important too, but we won't call them out. But with that, and I'm not necessarily talking about backseat drivers, even though we have some, right? No, amen. Amen. Think about this. I'm not talking about that. But, you know, sometimes some people just want to get from A to B. And I'm more of that type of person sometimes, especially if I've got somewhere I've got to be or got something I've got to do. But then you've got some other folks, and usually they're in the same car together. They like to stop here and there and here and there all along the way. You know what I'm talking about? Have you ever been in that situation before and taken a little detour you hadn't planned to take but decided you're going to go and check out this little place or this little spot or this town and it was a blessing? I want to challenge you this morning. Take the time to take those detours. Quit being in such a hurry to go from place to place because then you miss the blessings of God. Amen? And you know, last week was a little detour, and we had some blessings last week bestowed upon us. This week, we're going to get back on the path, the straight and narrow, if you will, and look at James chapter 4. Today, we're going to continue our series in James. Over the last few weeks, we've looked at the book of James specifically for directions on how to live out our Christian life. Did you notice what I just said? Not to live our Christian life, but to live out our Christian life and our Christian faith. We have looked at the fact that we should not only talk as Christians, we should walk as, walk as Christ walked. And I apologize. I'm having a little issue with my throat. And before we go any th further, we're going to stop and pray. Because today, the Lord has a message, and we're not going to let Satan take it away. Amen? So let us pray, and pray specifically that the Lord gives me strength to do His will and not mine this morning. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you and we humble ourselves. And Lord, as we go through this message today, let us just not go through the steps, but truly seek you in your word and what you would have for us to hear today. Lord, I pray that you give me strength and that you give my voice strength. Lord, that it's been going in and out all morning, all night, and you know Lord, I just pray that your will be done. Lord, most importantly, allow us to hear in our hearts what you would have us to hear. Touch us deep down within our soul. Lord, that we'll be moved to walk as you walked, to live as you live, and truly humble ourselves to become servants of the King. In the name of Jesus, we ask these things. Amen. We talked a little bit about not just talking the talk, but walking the walk. And we looked at that in James. Not only are we to believe, we're called to act out our faith in Christ. And one of the things I think we miss so, so often in life is we live as our parents lived. Let me explain. Have you ever been told in life by your parents, do as I say, not as I do? Anybody ever been there? We got a couple people nodding big, important, and somebody else is nodding. 
I've been there. And did, you, did it bother you when you were a kid? Did it bother you when you were a kid? It did, didn't it? When you grew up and you had your own kids, is that one of the things you said? And I did. Is that one of the things you, you said? Well, I'll never say. I'll never do. Right? How many of us said it and did it? Think about it. It's easy to fall into those old steps, isn't there? But what do we do as kids? What do children do? They don't do just what they're told. They do what they see. I've even noticed my three-year-old picking up stuff out of the floor with his feet and his toes instead of bending over and picking it up like a normal three-year-old. Well, where did he get it from? His daddy is too lazy to bend over and pick something out of the floor. I pick it up with my feet and my hands so I don't have to bend over. I got a little bit more of an obstacle in the way. But understand this. We do what we see, don't we? Does that change when we get older? We like to say it does, but do we? We still do what we see. So what we take in, we need to be careful of, don't we? Because what you take in, you put out, whether you realize it or not. And who are we putting it out to? Our children. Those around us. We're setting that example. So I want to encourage you again this morning. We've already talked about it. Not going to get back into it necessarily. But we need to allow our walk to be our walk for Christ and not just our talk. We need to act out our faith in Jesus. This means denying self and taking on the will of God. Did you catch that? We're called daily to deny self and take on the will of God. What does that mean? Well, I'm not Jesus. I can't do what he did. He's asked us to follow him. And to walk in his footsteps, hasn't he? In the name of Christ, we can do all things. He will strengthen us to do all things. Philippians 4.13. We all know that verse. Do we live it? Do we claim it? Do we want to? We need to. You see, his will be done, not mine. How many of us have ever heard that and said that before? Anybody? Am I the only one? We've done that, right? But do we do that? We say it. But do we live it out? Do we act it? Do we truly seek His will and not our own? And that's what I want us to look at as a church. If as a church, if as Parkwood Baptist Church, we truly believe and begin to live His will and not our own, things would change. Not just at Parkwood Baptist Church, but in my home, your home, each of our homes, our places of employment. Things would change, wouldn't they? Because let me show you something, and I'm not criticizing, I'm just trying to make a point to hit this home. If we truly believed His will and not our will, there wouldn't be an empty seat in this place. Amen? That's hard to amen because that means we're not doing some things we need to do. But if we truly believed, we would be bringing others to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And that's what we're called to do. That is the one thing that we all have a call for, is to bring others to Christ. And how do we do that? We're to remember we're to walk as Christ and not as our own agenda. You know, unfortunately, in our lives, we grow up with agendas, don't we? We do. We all have a plan. Have you ever discovered that your plan and God's plan aren't the same? What happens when you fight God's plan? It gets worse. I'm sorry? You lose. <laughs> Amen. It gets worse. Let me tell you, you can't fight God's plan. So why do we even try? If we would humble ourselves and submit ourselves to serve God with our entire hearts, he will meet our each and every need. Amen? And we would not go without. Actually, we'd probably live in more abundance if we truly followed Him. You see, everything that we should do should be about serving others. Because if we're truly to follow Christ, Christ come to serve, didn't He? Who did He serve? He served the Father by serving others. We're to serve Christ and the Father by serving others. We're called to humbly submit ourselves to servitude. 
We've discovered that we need to serve with a cheerful heart and out of love. Another thing we've learned on this journey through the book of James is to slow down and to listen to God. He will direct and lead if we are willing to follow Him and His directions. So church, I want to ask you something this morning. You know, I said we're called to slow down and to seek that small, still voice. And that's not Pastor Daniel. That's Scripture, isn't it? Don't believe me. Look at Psalms chapter 42, verse 10. We're to be still and know that He is God. Now understand this. When we truly comprehend that and wrap our hands around that, wrap our heads around that, we have to ask ourselves, are we willing to serve Him? Are we truly willing to serve God? So this morning, I want to ask you a question. Church, and I want an answer. Because God's asking us the same question. Are you willing to serve Christ? Are we? Church, you're going to have to commit now, yes or no. So you either speak and say yes or don't say anything. Are you willing to serve Christ? Yes. Yes. Now, you just committed to God. Understand that. And I'm not trying to trick you. I'm trying to make you understand this. Too often in this society, in today's time, we don't want to commit to anything. And we're taught if we don't say anything, we don't have to be there. If we don't do this, we don't have to show up. But you know what? The first thing you have to do as a Christian is to show up. Amen? We need to learn to commit one to another. Because if we can't commit one to another, how can you commit to God? Think about that. So are we willing to serve Christ? Some said yes. Some didn't say anything because we don't want to make that commitment. But if you can't commit to serve Him now, how are you going to spend eternity with Him? You're not. You're not. Well, pastor, you can't make that call. Yes, I can. Scripture says so. And we're going to look at that. Let's look a little deeper here. Week before last, we looked at chapter 3 and the idea of perfection in Christ. We discovered that perfection in Christ is not doing everything in the eyes of man. Perfection in Christ is not the same thing as earthly perfection. Understand that. Perfection in Christ is righteousness before God, is being right in the sight of God. There is a difference. When you seek godly wisdom... And set aside the things of this world, we seek the face of God. And we need to understand that. Do we seek the face of God in our daily lives, or do we seek to please man? That's something we need to touch on for a second before we move on to this week's. Too often in life, and I grew up this way, wanting to please others. Too often we're so concerned about pleasing and getting that approval from somebody else, we end up doing things we shouldn't do. Is there any truth to that? Sometimes we fall off the path of righteousness because we're watching man instead of watching God. We need to keep our focus on Jesus. We need to keep our focus on things of Christ, not things of this world. Well, Pastor, I'm just bombarded. There's so much stuff that goes on every day. I, I just I can't help it. Yes, you can. You can help it. Close those ears. Well, I can't turn them on and off. Yes, you can. Don't answer that phone when you don't need to. Don't turn that TV on. Don't turn that radio on. Don't listen to things that you shouldn't listen to. And I'm not talking about music. I'm not talking about television shows. Sometimes I'm talking about your spouse. Sometimes I'm talking about each other. Sometimes I'm talking about mama, daddy. My daughter, my son, you follow what I'm saying? Sometimes we take on everybody else's problems and we're going to fix them. But we ain't even touched ours. You better get right with God first before you try to take on somebody else's. Amen? Think about that. And we're going to learn a little bit more about that here in a few minutes and how to do that. Not just the pastor said not to do it. We're going to look at Scripture. We're going to see what James tells us to do and not to do. We also looked at 
Taming the tongue. And I just want to touch on this briefly. We've already talked about it, but I want to touch on it before we get into chapter 4. What does it mean to tame the tongue? Simply it means learning to know when to keep our mouth shut and when to open it. Amen? One of the things I want to share with you this morning before we go any further, and it's important. How many of us have ever heard the saying, think before you speak? We've taught our kids that, haven't we? I have. We've all said, uh, you need to think about what you just said. It's too late then, isn't it? We all say, think before we speak. But I'm going to give you a different rule. 